Hey everyone, Michael here. Today we're going to talk about Azure Bicep, which it's really just a ARM DSL or domain specific language. So the output of a Bicep file is going to be an ARM template that you can use elsewhere. Now there's a couple of cool things that kind of comes with it. So things such as like top safety is included in it. And you know what? I think we should just go ahead and take a look. Okay, so over here, the entire project is actually lives on GitHub. It's just a github.com slash Azure slash Bicept. And the official docs say that it is a Bicept is a declarative language for describing and deploying Azure resources. A couple of other things in here that may be worth noting here is, is that Bicept code is transpiled to standard ARM template JSON files which effectively treats the ARM templates as an IL. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's see how we're going to get started with this. Uh, you can also go back through this and you can read some of the goals and some of the non-goals. Definitely recommend going and checking out this page. So let's look at how we would install this. As we scroll down to this page here, I know we're going to be grabbing the Bicep VS Code extension very shortly. And let's see, okay, so you can install it through the CLI. Um, you can also install it with PowerShell. You can come in here and you can install it with Linux, Mac, and also with Windows. So uh, it does show that WinGit is supported. And since I have the very latest WinGit, which I believe a 1.0 may have been released here at Build, uh, I've already got this downloaded. So I'm gonna come in here just going to click on that little button to our clipboard. We're going to use the brand new Quake mode, which I talked about in a previous uh, YouTube video. And there we are. So we have our Quake mode. It's so beautiful. So let's do a Control V here. We're going to allow it to paste. And it is installing WinGit. Obviously, you can install this with whatever. Um, you know, tool that you may like to use. Like I said, it had like the installer, the executable uh, versions for Macs, for Linux. Uh, this is just one kind of cool way that at least I can show Quake mode yet again, as well as uh, show WinGit. Okay, cool. So it looks like it's completely installed. Bicep. And there it goes. It found it now. B-I-C-E-P, help, and there is our help information as well as we can go bicep version. Okay, great. It looks like it's installed. looks like it's running perfectly. All right, let's jump over to VS Code now. And in VS Code, I am already in a folder I created that's just called bicep to add a new file. And we're just going to call this storage account dot bicep. And here we go. It's already asking us down at the bottom. Do you want to install the recommended extension? I'm not going to install it just yet, but you can tell by this little icon here. That is the Azure bicep icon. So I'm going to paste one in here. And before we install the extension, I wanted just to show you. So this is the one for storage account. This is in their tutorial. I just copied it out just for playing with it. And what do we have here? We have a resource that is a Microsoft.storage storage accounts. And then coming into this, we have things such as the name, the location, different types of tags, as well as the SKU, and then the kind here. Now, this all may look pretty hard to read and to understand. And rightly so, if you installed the extension, well, then that's going to clear up a lot of this. So I, instead of clicking the install button down at the bottom here, I'm going to head back over into extensions and I am going to search for it this way, just in case you don't get that little pop-up button. Let's top in bicep here and let's go install. Okay. And it looks like it finished up. It is saying down here at the bottom, launching Bicep Language Service. Okay, it looks like that completed. So we're going to close out of that extension, and I'll just go ahead and remove that notification. 
And here we go. Now it's a little bit easier to read and to understand. Let's see if we can break it and if it's smart enough to tell us, hey, that's not correct. Uh, we could come down here to storage instead of this being uh, storage. Uh, we could just drop in a couple of different numbers there. And it says the property kind expected a value of top blob storage, block blob storage, or file storage. Okay, pretty cool. So it's pretty smart. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those ones. And if we remove storage altogether, let's just say we do this right here. Okay, very cool. So it actually will let you select from those. So this is great because I never know uh, what things are called. So I would take that and I'd be back to where I was at. Okay, and so if we wanted to potentially let other people come in here and update this script or to run this script, uh, we could add in parameters. So let's add in a few parameters. Storage, account, name, and this is going to be of string. Okay, now we can go ahead and we can start using this instead of hard coding this name right here. So let's remove this. Okay, and up at the very top, it does say storage account name. So I'm going to take that one. Okay, great. So it filled it out. Um, one thing also to note is, is that for a storage account name, um, it the minimum amount of characters is three, and whereas the max is 24, in case you're wondering where that came from. We're also going to change this to a West US, and I'm actually okay with leaving the rest as is. Okay, let's go ahead and let's build this .bicep file, which will give us our JSON file that we can deploy into Azure. So let's switch back over to the terminal here. Let's type in bicep build, and I am storing this in another location. So I need to provide the instructions of where this file right here, which is the storage account .bicep. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to come in here and copy this full path. We'll go back over to our command prompt here. And I think that should be it. I think we should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and try it. Okay. And now let's navigate into that folder. And there it is. I see that we have a storage account.json as well as a storage account.bicep. Let's take a look at these in VS Code we see there is a schema that has been built. Uh, inside of this, we now have a parameters file, which is pretty cool. It's a type string, which is what we declared here. And it says name the storage account. Perfect. We have a max length as well as the min length, which we described up here. And if we look down into this, we now have a resources that has been built for us. So there is the API version, which matches that string. West US, which matches right up to this one. And there we go. For the parameters, it is going to ask us for that storage name. And the rest of that includes the SKU and the kind, which we played with a little bit earlier. Okay, let's see now if we can go ahead and deploy this into Azure. And I'm going to type in here AZ deployment group create dash elf storage account dot json and let's give it that storage account name so storage account name and that's just going to be equal to mb crump yt and we also need a resource group as well as tell the parser that we are going to pass a parameter in here. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so we need to create a resource group. So let's go ahead and do that. AZ group create name my RG and I am going to put this in West US. Okay, let's run that. Okay, that looks like that succeeded properly. Now we can come back and we can run our command. So let's go ahead and run that. And we just got a failure, but it's actually a good failure because it's stating, hey, 
it's not a valid storage account name. So we can fix that pretty easy. Come back in here and we're going to make that a lowercase yt. And it looks like it is running. So fingers crossed. Okay, that looks good. Moment of truth, let's go to the portal. And there it is, my RG, and there is the name of the storage account, which is MB Crump YT. I hope this helped out a bit. Thank you so very much for watching. And don't forget some of these other videos that I've created since build has happened. Bye-bye.